two spinning kicks. A spinning back kick and a spinning hook kick. And we're just gonna try and make sure you know the differences between the two and the difference of the setup between the two kicks. So let's get into it. So we're gonna start on a spinning back kick. We're gonna break down the techniques of it. We could break it down into many different parts, but just to keep the video short enough, we're gonna break it down into nice, simple four steps. So I'd say the main part of a spinning kick, any spinning kick, would be the setup of the kick. So where you're placing your leg before you throw the kick. So when you're showing technique maybe for line work, it's okay to maybe step across. If you were sparring and you did a big step before you did a spin, obviously your opponent would see that kick coming. But for today, we're gonna to break it down as if we're doing way more technique, more in line for a gradient. So with your lead leg, the one that sets up the kick, you could step in and attack, so I'm closing the gap, so if they've moved away, I wanna step before I do the spin. If they've moved across, I can step with them. If they've moved this way, I can step with them. But for today's one, we're gonna keep it nice and simple. And your lead leg, whether you're left or right footed, is gonna come right across the body. So if they're there, your center line is now here, look. So part one of this four step breakdown. Part one is the step, so all the way across. Part two, is this spin. You can see when I spin now, look, the leg that's gonna do the kick with has a clear, straight path to the target. If I didn't do this step at the start with and I just spun on the spot for a back kick, you can see that my legs are tangled up and I don't have a clear line. I can still fire the back kick, but nowhere near as good. So for today's, nice and simple. Step one, step across. Two, is the spin. Three, we're going to fire the kick out, so straight back. And four, we're going to land back down. So with spinning back kicks, we can go all the way through with the kick and 360 with it, or we can come back the same way, so we'll break down the two. Okay, so if we're going all the way through with the kick, step one, lead leg comes across, guard still up, obviously it would be a lot quicker. Part two, you spin, so you've got a straight line for the back leg to throw the back kick, so that's part two. Part three is pushing out the back kick, boom. And part four is back to guard. So resetting your feet, starting where you land, sorry, ending where you started. So one, step. Two, turn. Spot the target, get a straight line of attack for the leg. Three, the kick. And four, back to guard. So that's if we're going all the way through. So step, spin, kick, and back to guard. So you can see my foot is turning almost like a spinning side kick. Gotta try and turn the toes down as much as you can and really dig in with your heels. The back kick wants to be going in a straight line, not hooking round, not with the toes. You wanna to be coming spin and pushing the back kick through. Here, here, kick. So trying to drive with the heel. So here, kick. Here, kick. So if you want to get more height with the kicks, I would say the simplest way to do it would be to drop your head as you're throwing the kick and to bring the knee up. So one with a little bit more height. So I still spin the same, still look the same. The difference is I don't really stand more upright with it because I'm not firing a midsection kick to the body. If I want to spin one up to the head, I can just drop so it lifts and opens up the hip a bit more. Pull, and still back to guard. So midsection one, spin, kick, and back to guard. More of a high section one, spin, turn, just drop a little bit. Push the back kick up and back to guard. Okay, so another version of a spinning back kick. So rather than spinning all the way through, like we were doing in the last clips, in this one we're gonna spin, hit the target, and come back the same way off the target. There's sometimes the graders and examiners like to see the control of you being able to spin, kick your leg out and come back the same way rather than just falling through the kick. Also in sparring and the fights and stuff like that, I would say it's a little bit easier to kick off a target and come back off the same way. When I'm fighting or sparring, this is the one I do. So I spin, kick the target, and come back off the same way and back to a guard. So we break it down pretty much the same way. Step one, we'll go across. We'll imagine that they've not moved or if it's line work, we need to be stood here anyway. One is the step across. Two, it's the same turn. So three, it's gonna kick out and then all the way back through the same way. So we're not 360 in, we're doing a 180 spin out and 180 spin back. So we're gonna break it down more into three parts on this one. So first part, we're gonna step across the same. Two, we're gonna 
Turn, remember, open up that straight line for the kick. So part three is a kick and to come back the same way. So I'm gonna kick and come back out the same way. So here, across for one. Two is the spin. Three, you're gonna kick straight to midsection, drive the heel as much as you can, toes down as much as you can, heel up as much as you can, and then pull your knee back out to force the spin back here. So kick and then force your knee back through. So you go one across, two is a turn, you kick out and then you pull your knee back to force the 180 spin back. So on the other one you don't really need to do that because the momentum will carry you through. Even though we're doing a back kick that way, the momentum still sort of carries you through to a full 360. On this one we're spinning, kicking, and then coming back out 180 the same way. So one, step through, hands, two, still got that guard there, three, straight out, straight back, remember to force the knee here. Pull it straight back to guard. Okay? Stop, turn, kick, back to guard. Ooh. So exactly the same with this one. If I want more height, I can just drop the body and it will open up the hips and force the kick a little bit higher. So step across, exactly the same. Turn, two, drop the body as you throw the kick and then back to guard. There you were. Pull the knee back out. So then we're going two different spinning back kicks. It's the exact same kick, we're just going all the way through with the first one, or coming off the target with the second one, back the same way as we came. So 360 with the first one, 180 out, 180 back with the second one. So let's go through them again, but I'll just throw the kicks out. So we're gonna go all the way through on the first one. So step, start, turn, kick, and go through. Number two, spin, kick, come back the same way. Step the same, turn the same. Kick, pull the leg back out, and back to guard. Okay, so the footwork. So if an opponent's moved away, I obviously can't step across here to close the gap. If they've moved back a foot, say, I need to close that gap by a foot. So my front foot, my lead leg, that sets up the kick, would go forward, off on an angle. So my left leg will come forwards. If they've stood still, I would step across. Because they've not moved, I've not moved. I'm just setting the kick up. Okay, so if they've moved back, I would need to step, turn, and then throw the kick out, and back to guard. If they've not moved, or for grading purposes, if they want you to stay on the spot, if they want this back leg to stay where it started, and the front leg to end up where it started, I can come across, then spin. Okay, equally, if they come at me, I can still set up a spinning back kick and they work really well because the power and momentum of somebody moving in on your kick, the power of them moving in and the power of the kick together is really good. So, if they're moving away, I would step in and across. If they stood still, I would step across in a straight line, not forwards. If they come at me, my front leg would come back. I would spin and then throw the kick. So breaking it down, last time. If they move back, I'll step in. If they're stood still, I'll step across. If they're stepping to me, I can step back. Yeah. Okay, so spinning hook kicks. So with this one, we're gonna break it down into three parts. We're gonna step, spin, and throw the kick out. It's much easier in a spinning hook kick to go all the way through as the momentum carries you through. With a spinning back kick, as we did in the last part of this video, the momentum needs to come towards you. We're coming through the body or through the hair, so spinning and attacking. With a spinning hook kick, we're starting and spinning all the way through into a 360 because the kick is coming through. A back kick comes towards you, a spinning hook kick goes all the way through. So round through the target. So momentum's gonna carry me through to land back to here. So I'm gonna start here and go all the way through and land here. I could come back the same way as I entered the kick, like 180, 180 in and 180 back out. Exactly the same as I did with the spinning back kick, but it's much harder without a target there. It can be done, but today we're gonna to go all the way through. So we're gonna set it up the same as a spinning back kick. So your lead leg, we're gonna step across. Remember, if they move back, I could attack. I could stay on the spot. I could step away if they've closed the gap. But for th this video today, nice and simple, stay on the spot. So lead leg, step across. 
That's part one. Two is the spin. So three is the hook kick coming all the way through. So we're going to presume that you know what a hook kick is and we're just going to work with it from there. So spin, kick, and then back to guard. So you can see the complete difference in the spinning back kick and a spinning hook kick. Back kick comes towards you, hook kick comes round and kicks through. So we can come into the ribs, into the legs for K1, up to the face. Works amazing. So the same with the height on it. You can, if you drop the body, the height can come up. Oh, sorry, the, the kick will come up. You guys that are much more flexible, you can be able to stand there, spin, and throw, getting the leg up a little bit higher, be able to kick to the face. But we're going to go up midsection and high section. So step, part one, two, turn, three with the back leg. You can see it opens up a perfect line here to kick through and back to guard. So we can point with the heel to give more power in there. Or we can point with the toes for a little bit more range on the shot. Either kick works amazing. Either kick has a lot of power, a lot of muscle and a lot of weight coming through the spin. Okay, so we'll break it down again. One is the step. Two is the turn. Three, the kick, and back to guard, all in one motion. One, two, to three. So from here, one, two, three. Try to land where you were. You can see that sometimes my feet end up here, but I reset back to an orthodox stance or southpaw, whichever way you guys are. So step across, one, two, three. So for the height on the kick, on part two, I'm just gonna drop as I throw part three. So one step, two turn, drop the body weight and lift the leg up at the same time, and then back to guard. So it's a little bit smoother if I haven't got to break it down. So I'll just go through to make it a little bit smoother. So you can see when I'm doing them, the more I turn my head, the better the kick ends up. If I keep facing that back wall, or come slow with the head and try and speed the kick up, it doesn't work. If I turn the head all the way through, force it round like I'm trying to spin, the spinning hook kick will come off a lot easier. Okay, so from here, I want to keep looking all the way through, back to the guard, here. 